Hey guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. We're gonna do a series of five videos about a particular sector that I think is worth looking at investing in right now. We're gonna talk about a subset of healthcare, it's biotechnology. The first video today is just gonna talk about what is biotechnology, how does it differ from pharmaceutical companies, we're going to talk about why now might be a good time to be buying into biotechnology. And then I'm just going to introduce the three ETFs that I'm going to talk about in the next three videos. Lastly, the last, uh, the fifth video in the series, we'll just talk about which one I think might be the best one to invest in. Right now, we'll compare all three. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, let's dive right in. First of all, we need to talk about what is biotechnology. This slide explains it pretty well. So it's a combination of biology and technology. And when we combine those two, what we end up is using living systems and organisms to develop or make useful products or any technological application that uses biologic systems, living organisms, or derivatives thereof to make or modify products or processes for a specific use. What is it that we're talking about here? Well, these are some examples of biotechnology in play. So you can see here just a nice list of 10 of them. I'll let you just look over those on your own. And these are some applications of those science technologies, things like bioengineered crops that are disease resistant or drought resistant. We're talking about biofertilizers and gene cloning and human gene therapy, being able to replace a non-working gene with a working gene. That is astounding. We're talking about DNA fingerprinting, little DNA pieces as markers used to identify people. The limitations on the use of biotechnology are really probably only limited by the human imagination. All right, the second question, how does this differ from pharma or pharmaceutical companies? Well, the differences are actually significant. Biotech companies, of course, by definition, are using the processes of a living organism to do their work. Uh, they might be making things such as alcohol, plastic, washing detergents, cosmetics. Those are all made by biotechnology, but really the big one that when you're investing in this uh, subcategory is going to be healthcare types of biotechnology. Some well-known companies that are here, Celgene, Amgen, Gilead Sciences, Biogen. When we get to pharma, really we're talking about companies that are using uh, artificial sources to create new medicines. So really we're getting into a lot of chemistry here when we're just dealing with pharma. Of course, there are some companies that are biopharma and really they're starting to kind of co-mingle with big pharma companies utilizing the services of biotechnology companies, either by acquiring them or by making agreements with them. The major big players in pharma, of course, we're talking about things like Johnson & Johnson, Novartis, Roche, Bayer, Pfizer, all right, now that we've talked about what biotechnology is and we've given you a difference between biotech and pharma, I want to talk about why now is a good time to be investing in biotechnology. To do that, I want to start with an example from the recent past, not with the biotechnology company, but with the Vanguard Energy Index ETF. So uh, I have been buying Vanguard's Energy ETF over the last few years, and quite honestly, I bought much of it back here when it was in the $100 range. Uh, but I really also started buying some here when it started declining. Uh, the, really the best time to buy this then would have been when it got to around $30 way back in March of 2020. Now, a lot of people were in the process of selling it then, obviously that's why the price declined so much. So why would then, why would that have been the good time to buy it? Well, obviously we want to buy low and sell high. So buying at $30 a share or $37 a share certainly beats buying it at $79 a share, which I bought some of it then, but it certainly beats even better buying it at $105 a share, which I also had bought some of it then. So anyone who bought back here and, and now has it here, obviously really hasn't made any money on what they've made out of it is dividends. But the people who have really made money are the ones who are willing to buy it when it was at its worst. So this is a chart that shows just how much biotechnology has come down from its highs. Now, we're gonna look at three of these in terms of ETFs. We're gonna look at the iShares Biotechnology ETF. We're gonna look at the Spider Biotech ETF, and we're gonna look at the ARC Genomic Revolution ETF. So just following the colors here, the purple, we'll see that the purple is down 28%. 
we're gonna look at this sort of oranges color and it's down, or peach color maybe, it's down almost 50%. And if we look at the ArcG, it's down almost 60%. So when is the time to buy these things? When they're down. So that showed you some of the ETFs and how far down they are. I'm gonna use Webull as well here just to give you another idea of how far biotech companies have come down. This is a list of about 100 biotech and pharma companies in Webull. I can't really separate them uh, down to just biotech by themselves in here, but let's just look at some of these. There are multiple companies on this list that are significantly down from their 52-week high and are in the biotechnology sector. Now, I don't want you to just take my word for this as to why this might be a good time to buy, so I wanna share with you a couple or three clips of people who have been on CNBC recently discussing biotech and why this might be a good time to be buying. The first one was just actually on television today on CNBC. We're going to lis be listening to Morgan Stanley analyst Mike Wilson and what he had to say about investing in healthcare right now. Is there a specific area of the market, maybe one, two, three sectors that you'd say, you know what, our, our economy's this, our, we're going to see a lot of pressure to the downside, but you know, this is an area that I think you can actually is investable. Is there a specific sector you'd point out? There, there's several, Pete, and, and, and thanks, for your, thanks for your comments. I mean, look, I think, I mean, look, healthcare looks extremely attractive in both the valuation perspective, and that's an area where there's pent up demand. It's also defensive, which is in line with our general defensive posture. Okay. And it, look, the second one is a clip that appeared back in January. This was from the SoFi analyst, again, regarding healthcare, and she also mentions the subsector of biotech. Liz Young, um, that plays into a biotech conversation of whether we should be bullish or not the space, as Adam Parker told us before the break, that we should be, albeit there may be some risk in certain stocks. What do you think? Well, let's take healthcare as a sector as a whole, trading about middle of the pack performance wise year to date. I think healthcare is a great place to hide out during rate volatility. And then you break it down even further, look at things like biotech and pharma and know that they're a little bit more growthy in the healthcare sector, so they're going to see more volatility as we have rate news. But then you've got healthcare equipment and services that kind of balances that out. I think healthcare is a great place to be here, and I think it's a great place to be for the long term. I used it as my final trade last time I was on. Lastly, let's hear an analyst that specifically discusses the sector of biotechnology. You still like biotech? Because that sector is still taking a, a drubbing. <laughs> yeah, I like biotech a lot. We always pair things to try to beat the market. So if we're overweight biotech, we're going to be underweight, say, like profitless software. You know, to me, biotech's a real opportunity. Relative price to sales is at a 10-year low. Um, you know, and the innovation pipeline looks the same. In other words, the forecasted sales is the same as it was prior. One of the things that's really interesting, Melissa, is people feel like when interest rates rise, all these businesses that have a lot of value far out in the future will, will do poorly. But did you know that only 15% of biotech companies ever generate positive cumulative free cash flow? And the ones that do, it's five years from now, five years to do it on average. So the whole terminal value argument will be on the next interest rate cycle by the time that matters for most of them. So our judgment is probably pretty good risk reward there. Sure, if we get dovish sentiment relative to today, they're all going to go up, profitless software and biotech. But I think the innovation is pretty cheap for biotech, and I like that idea. Now, there is risk involved with these companies. One thing you need to know about biotechnology companies is that they're small generally, and oftentimes they only have one or two drugs in a pipeline, or at least one or two that might make it, might make it to FDA approval at any given time. Now, if they don't get those approvals, then they stand a good chance of the company failing. So it's important to know if you're picking these individually that there can be significant risk. So when I get to the last question, what to buy? Well, I'm gonna be talking about three ETFs and they're the ETFs that I showed you earlier. We're gonna be talking about ARKG, A-R-K-G. We're gonna be talking about IBB, that's the iShares Biotechnology. And we're gonna be talking about the Spider Biotechnology ETF. So those will be the next three videos that I produce for this segment. I hope this information was useful for you. If it was, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to us. And as always, enjoy your investing.